Hi, everybody, and welcome to the 2020-2021 school year. This is going to be our first assignment. One of the hallmarks of ancient civilization and one of the driving forces has been the driving need for humans to communicate with one another. Throughout human history, humans have been using a combination of images, hieroglyphics, letters, and words to communicate with each other. You took my love right from the start. Throughout history, humans used pictograms, hieroglyphics, and letters in combination with drawings in order to facilitate understanding. Human society only advances when we are able to communicate with one another and express ideas, concepts, and feelings with each other. All the way back to the prehistoric days, before writing was even a thing, humans would paint on the walls in order to leave their mark and express concepts and ideas with one another. These crude, stylized drawings eventually evolved into pictograms, then into hieroglyphics, and eventually into the letters that we know today. Before paper was invented by the Chinese 220 AD, people used to have to actually chisel into the stone the messages that they wanted to leave behind. And you can see that in those ancient Sumerian and Mesopotamian tablets that had been left behind. In 3000 BC, the Egyptians had invented a paper-like substance that was called papyrus. And you can see that they were already painting and drawing and using hieroglyphics in order to communicate ideas all the way back then. You can see on this rubbing how the pictograms and the hieroglyphics are used to communicate ideas in conjunction with imagery. If you're interested, there are hieroglyphic translators on the internet. Here are some rough translations that I got off the internet. I will not vouch for their accuracy. They could be wrong, but they are interesting. And you can see all the care that the stonemakers and the scholars took to lovingly chisel this into the stones over here at the Egyptian Temple of Karnak. And you can see some of the first examples of modern lettering over here in some of the ancient Greek temples. and some ancient Greek writings. There's not enough love in the world to and chronologically following some ancient Roman writings. And as long as there have been walls and as long as there have been people, there have been people that have been creating graffiti on those walls. Here's some ancient Roman graffiti. Obviously without mass production techniques, the actual act of creating a book was an extremely expensive process. During the Dark and Middle Ages, the church would gather together young, educated men into abbeys. 
These men dedicated their lives to recreating the Bible, copying it painstakingly, one page at a time, over and over again for their entire lives. And these men also had some artistic ability. Only a very small percentage of the population could read, so they would always try to include hand-drawn illustrations to go along with the passages. These illustrations were often very well done. If you go to the University of Miami's Low Art Museum, you can find that they have a couple of these pages on display. They are really beautiful. Again, note the combination of words and beautiful illustrations. This is the very basis of graphic design. Often considered one of the most important inventions in human history, the invention of the Gutenberg Press in 1440 changed everything. Suddenly, we were able to get books and publications into the hands of the masses. Here's a picture of one of the books that were the first to come off the Gutenberg Press, the Gutenberg Bible. Interestingly, if you were to get your hands on a Gutenberg Bible today, its value is worth more than $35 million. One of the first typefaces used by the Gutenberg Press was known as Black Letter and it came out somewhere around 1150. And printers continued to develop new typefaces just like Old Style here which was developed somewhere around 1734. Now, one of the more important skills that a graphic designer must have is the ability to do hand lettering. I'm going to show you a couple of examples of different types of hand lettering in the next couple of seconds. Take a look. The addition of color always adds an additional wow factor. Now let's take a look at the assignment, what it is I'm going to be requiring of you. This is going to be a hand-drawn block lettering assignment. It's going to be due September 15th, 2020. I need you to very lightly sketch your bleed lines. You need to develop five equal horizontal spaces for your boxes. You need at least 26 boxes for your letters, and you'll need additional spaces for your first name along the bottom. Number five, sketch lightly all the letters. Number six, ink the outlines of your letters. Number seven, color neatly all of your letters. Number eight, take a picture of your neat, well-done work and upload it to Microsoft Teams. All right, let's take a look at the project itself now. You are going to produce one sheet, including the entire alphabet, and make sure that your name is on the bottom, fully colored, and pen and ink around all the outside edges. After you've created your squares, you need to have at least 26 of them, and probably more because you need your name as well. Also, please notice that all the letters are about equal distance apart. Working within the top, bottom, and side lines that you have already provided, you're going to create the shape of the letters. Use your pencil, sketch lightly. Finish all your letters. Add your first name using the same letter. Erase your pencil lines and prepare to work with your pen.
You're going to start using your pen now. Try to keep your hands steady and try to draw one solid unbroken line that goes around the outside edges of each letter. Now it's time to clean up your work. Take your eraser and erase all your extraneous pencil lines. It's time to choose your colors. I like to choose families of colors, colors that are related. I always work progressively light to dark. My lightest color first, in this case that would be yellow, and then I would go to orange, and then I would move on to darker orange, and then finally to that dark purple. lightest color should cover the entire letter. Your darker color should stay closer to the edges and they should move progressively towards the center. Alright, let's take a moment and recap what it is that I'm looking for. Number one, I need you to make sure that you do a light sketch first. Number two, make sure that you include room for all of the letters. The bottom line needs to be your own name in those same letters. You need to make sure that you use your pen and ink for all the outlines, and you need to make sure that you use color and mix your colors. Make sure you stay in one direction. Make sure that you photograph your work, and make sure that you post your work on Microsoft Teams for a grade. For extra credit, draw two birds into your drawing.